sometimes I look back and think, I almost killed myself for like, <laughs> actually, like literally there's been times I could have died, but that's not doing the Jackie, it's more doing other shit, like illegal at night, you don't know where the fuck you're going, you're running and, you know, the next morning you check, oh, wow, I just missed that freaking, you know, cliff that I didn't, had no idea was there. We didn't have no scaffolding. We didn't have no scissor that list. Was good times, it was yeah. just raw artwork, man. No projector. I've been told. I've been told many times I should just like write a book because mm. the amount of things that I've oh, experienced yeah. overseas in Brazil, in Bolivia, in Japan, Berlin, New York, Bronx, Mexico, dude, like, man. <laughs> Thank you for joining us in the flats. We've got uh, a couple of special guests in tonight. Uh, first up, we've got to thank, thank our uh, sponsor, Capital Brewing, uh, for providing the beers here. So thank you for them for supporting the channel. Big, uh, big supporters of the Canberra scene too, so awesome to have them involved. But lads, welcome. Thank you for joining us. What's, What's on, been Nick? happening? Thanks for having us, brother. What brings you to Canberra, Swayze? Uh, well, South Sydney, South West Sydney. South West Sydney. To Canberra, right, what's, yeah. what's, what brings you to town? Originally it was just work. I got a call for work. Um, flip out trampoline arenas. Uh, they called me to do like all the murals inside. So I got here for work and the next minute we're freaking hanging out and going out places. I saw um, you in the, the Woden drains yeah, earlier spot, in the week. Yeah, hit that spot. Um, mad spot, that place. I painted there like many years ago and I, I totally forgot about it. Yeah. And I was like, hit up my boys, oh, where's the spot to paint? And they're like, Worden Drains. I got there and I was like, oh shit, I've been here before. And it's a mad spot. Like, we don't even have something like that in Sydney. There's not many spots like that in Sydney. Yeah. And I started checking online and um, there's so Did many spots, off? man. Actually, yeah, this has just gone Did loose. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it was uh, 2005, perhaps, Word and Drains. Um, there was, I think, like 15 of us, including Phoebs, a whole bunch of us. We were um, sponsored by, by Crunch, uh, Crunch Spray Cans, and they sponsored just heaps of pain, went to the drains, smashed it, like 15 namer. Then I forgot about the place, totally forgot. And someone hit me up, said, oh, man, you know, go to um, the Word and Drains. I went there, I was like, oh, I've been here before. And I forgot how dope it is there, man. Like, it's just not many toy pieces, all decent, nice burners. Yeah. So I and heard it was like the Hollywood, Hollywood, uh, well, not the Hollywood, but it's like a walk of fame. fame for like, you know, oh, for graph writers, you know. It's been about 16 of, years for you since you painted. Yeah, man. Since I've been there the last time. Mm. So I went there, rocked two pieces with an old friend of mine, actually an old um, OG Canberra writer, um, Odyssey. Uh, SFX, shout out to Odyssey, my man. He's, um, yeah, he's like, dude, we have to go there. So we went there, rocked two pieces, and got the flicks, you know. That was good. Yeah. Dope spot. That man. was dope. Bro. There's I heaps like of um, legal spots in Canberra. Yeah. I was told there's more legal walls in Canberra than any other city yeah. in Australia, that's apparently. True. I'm not, I don't know if that's a fact or what, but. Nah, it's true. But I the good that. The good thing about these walls, though, I've been checking them out online. They don't look like legal walls. Like, they're in drains or under freeways, near the river. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like... they got some the, character. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, it doesn't look like, mm. like a permission wall mm. that you would get maybe in Sydney or in Melbourne where it's in the streets in the middle of the city. You know what I mean? These are like it's proper dirty, down, underground type um, drains and shit, which I love drains. I love painting in drains, so. So it's been fun here, man. Like, I've been here a couple of weeks now, shit, and mm. it's been fun. I'm doing a piece tomorrow, Friday, doing an another piece on Saturday. Yeah. Um, yeah, meeting people, nice peoples. You know, it's been fun, man. And making money, obviously. <laughs> making <laughs> some quick money, some good money quick. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And then using all the leftover paint from the job. Mm. So I'm not even, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I'm getting spoilt here. In, in yeah, I do. 
it's a blessing to get paid uh, to get paid by doing what you love to do. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. That's a blessing. And and what Definitely. keeps you kind of keeps you so interested in painting? You've been doing it a fair while, and it's what's it, what's about it that keeps you going? It's pretty much the only thing that I know I can do really well. I mean, there's other things, but they won't they won't make me as much money. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Not that I even want to make money from graph. Like, you know, um, we started like just to be rebellious and like a hobby. Um, so I'm just lucky that you know I can make money from it. Um, but why make a little bit if you can make a lot? Mm. Like, doesn't you know what I'm saying? So, um, so I'm just I'm striving for that, so I can you know buy a house and buy a car from just using a spray can. Like, if I can do that, I'll do it. That's cool. Um, you know what I mean? Some people might say, oh, you're selling out. You know what I mean? The whole sellout um, label. It's so weird because it's like as soon as you sell something of your product or like say if you're a rapper or a dancer or anything and you sell something that you've you've created, it's like you're selling out. And it's like, man, like everybody's sold something that they've made. That doesn't mean that you're a seller. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I try to balance things anyway. I'll always go bombing. I'll always be dropping throws. I'll always be doing illegal graffiti. Until the day that I stop doing illegal graffiti, then you can call me a sellout. But until <laughs> then, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna you keep. Gonna, you gotta yeah, I'm gonna bro. keep doing my thing, bombing, graffiti, and illegal, whatever. Like and make money. Why not? If I can make money from it, I'm gonna do it. So, mm. yeah. Unreal. And it's taking you around the world too. Well, that's one of the perks, yeah, of uh, working for a big company as a flip out. They've employed me to do all their murals. So whenever they open up um, an arena, wherever it may be, it could be Dubai, China, they fly me over, free flights, free hotel, free paint, and I'll tell them specifically weekends off. I don't work weekends, like <laughs> five days. So on the weekends... I take all the leftover paint, you know what I mean, and do whatever I want with it, you know what I'm saying? So That's even better when you can work, you know what I mean, and you say when you have your breaks. Oh, dude, that's another you know thing. I mean? that's, too. that's dope. They know I work when I want to work, at, at what time I start, what days I want to work, when I finish, I tell them, and they call it. They didn't even yeah. ask me any questions or anything. Not many people can say that, man. Man, it's, it's crazy. Mm. Like the other day, I was telling you the other day, where I, I went into work at a thing like midday <laughs> and on site and I have to work with a bunch of um, of tradies and construction site sort of sort of people because, you know, they're doing all the welding and they're doing all the flooring or whatever. And I'm, I, you know, I go in there and I'm doing artwork on the walls. So I'm like the odd one out. I, I walk in at 12, do my thing and I'll leave at 4 or 5 and they're like, Look at this guy, man. What the fuck? Like, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? And I'm making more money than them as well. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. and now I can say nothing. The boss is happy as long you as, call as, the shots. as long as long as I'm doing what I'm supposed to do mm. at a good level and on schedule. Like, they don't, you know, no one can say nothing. So That's right. I'm my own boss in a way. Like, I work when I want to work. I give them the quote. And there's no questions asked. And the quote, boom, there it is. But um, but yeah, the real fun is after work. But when I go to the drains or whatever, or drop some throws in some spots, highways, whatever. When you don't get yeah, paid, that's saying. funny, man. <laughs> the the real fun happens after when work, you don't course. when you didn't get when you don't get paid, man. Hundred percent. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. the same thing, like with me, man. Like with tattooing. You know what I mean? Like the real fun happens when I do my private designs my private sessions, say on a Sunday on my day off, mm. and I might have like a client, just me and the client, and there's yeah. no one in the studio. Oh, you know right. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. We play the music I like, mm. you know. Get into your and vibe. It's, yeah, that's it. It's just, you know. It doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like work, you know that's, I mean? You yeah. take the time that you like. 100%. You know what I mean? You got no yeah. one, you know, telling you, hey, what time are you going to be finished? Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it's your, your design, the the client tells you, you know, do whatever you want. Sometimes the client doesn't even know what they're getting, man. 
until they arrive on the day. And they're like, sure, let's go ahead with that. I trust you. Well, that's crazy. Like, that, you know no idea until they get there. Yeah, no idea until they get there. And wow. and I, I've never had a day when someone's like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to get that. All right. You know, what I mean, I normally people who have private sessions with me. Yeah. Are coming in to get my artwork and my designs. No, I see. Yeah, I mean yeah. that that that's that's cool. That's that's more that's satisfying. Dope, man. That's more just, satisfying. Yeah, than just that work doing the typical thing. Yeah, hundred percent productions and 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 uh, you know the jo- yeah. It's just funny, man. How like the the work that we don't get paid for. Yeah, is what we enjoy the most. Hundred percent money can't buy that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like when we did our Jackie Wall, that forever yeah. hands down. You know what I mean? That was uh, will be the highlight 100%. of our lives. You that know, was what seven days? Was it seven, seven days de- or five nah, days? I what? think we did. Oh, no, nah, we did five. I think seven. we did about seven days. And no money, no nah, no dollars, no money, man. I think I funded the Working. whole paint. Working till late. Yeah, it the, actually cost you guys money. <laughs> it cost me. It cost, it cost me cost money. Us, yeah. So it cost us both money. I remember I was working uh, in the public servant. Is this the long, I was, this the long version? There's some some yeah. parts here that I haven't seen. Yeah. This this this, this is long version. Me. Yeah. All oh, right. Nice video, by the way. Nick. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Very Pleasure. you you Pleasure. you killed it, Nick. <laughs> We're very um. Appreciative of that. Of yeah, yeah it's man. great yeah. to watch this one come to life. Eh? See, bro, you can see. Look at the sun coming down. We didn't have no scaffolding. We didn't have no scissor lifts. Was good times, it was yeah. just raw artwork, man. No projectors. Had we, the high beams on at night. Yeah, we, we, we just kept have going fun, at man. night to like eight, nine at, at the, in the evening. Kept going. We just we just had fun with it, bro. It was two men possessed. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jackie Chan. Seen the freaking wall, man. Yeah, he's man. seen it like online through his phone, but still, the fact that he's mm. seen it, seen us working on it, and then he retweeted or re- reposted yeah. on his Chinese social media with like millions of followers, if not a billion followers, whatever they have. But do you remember how and, um, how we found out about that? Wasn't it like some some Asian yeah. some Asian guy that was, was walking past his painting was like, "Hey, you sh- you should have started this wall a week ago." We were like, why? And he's like, oh, because Jackie Chan was was here in, in, Whoa, in Canberra, no bro. We, we missed him by missed a week. Him. So by the time him. we found out about it, he was already in Sydney filming a movie. Doing that um, opera house scene. Yeah. He was filming a movie up there, bro. And uh, which, wow. and then he found out about us about a week or two later. You know what I mean? And I think it was because he still owns that street where we were painting. The, the main yeah. street where all the shops are. He apparently owns all that. So mm. he has close friends around there, man, that still talk to one of, you know what I mean, on a... So that's what happened, right? One of his friends yeah. seen it, yeah. took photos, sent, sent it to Jackie. Him. Yeah. And then he reposted with yeah, our names on it. I seen it. Yeah. We read it from the... It was all in Chinese, but then our names were in English mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and our photos. And yeah. it was like, whoa, okay, that just made it all worth it. The fact that he saw it, acknowledged it, yeah. and shared it. Yeah. Like, well, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and we and man, that was worth not getting paid. Yeah, man, that was, <laughs> yeah. that was just for love, bro. Mate. Yeah, man. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, proud of that one. Yeah, man. It's still and up we, there, man. It has it's been untouched? That was 2016, if I recall. I was gonna man. say, isn't it? Yeah. Wasn't it 2015? 16. The bid from 2016, yeah. So, well, there you go. Then 2016. Yeah, that was what five, six years now. Six and there's no, there's a new building on this car park here, dude, so it's that. but it's still there, <laughs> dude. dude <laughs> that that was dope, man. That was so we've got to get him to do the new video, man. Yeah, yeah. obviously, like so. Yeah. What, what do you guys got planned? You want to explain? Or? Yeah, so man, I don't know, man. That's if, if there's one thing that you and me have in common and we share, bro, is the love for hip hop. And martial arts. Martial arts, anime, you know, Asian culture, bro. Yeah, 100%. B-boying, mm. all that, man, which is pretty much in one way, shape, or form, bro. It's it's all the same thing. Just, you know what I mean, expressed in different ways. One through dancing, you know what I mean, the other through movements, 
of mm -hmm. dancing poses. Oh, and, yeah. You know, and I feel that um, you know we wanted to share our love for Jackie Chan and the martial arts. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and because he he uh, owns the Chinatown Steel. You know, we want to make a seat. There. Yeah, we, he grew up in That's that funny, area. That's funny, like, a lot of Australians don't know that Jackie Chan grew up mm. most of his, his childhood in Canberra. Yeah. Like, when I was showing people the wall that we done, they didn't know that he grew up yeah. in Canberra. Um, I think I think it wasn't only... Wasn't it all the way up to high school he was in Canberra? From, college, because he, he went to Dixon College. Dixon College, Which yeah, is yeah. the yeah. suburb where we did, like, like, the mural. He, I think he owned, like... One of the restaurants on the main street. Where was he born? Though? He wasn't born in Canberra. No, he was born no. in Hong Kong. Hong Kong, obviously Hong Kong. And Hong then he Kong. came when he was like three or seven. I somewhere can't, in between. I, I can't remember. His dad used to work for the as, American embassy. As a here. kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He uh, lived in Woden, his father did. Pretty sure, I think. In Woden? Yeah, which is uh, south side of Canberra. You know? Yeah. But I just thought it only makes sense that after we just we just had so much fun doing the Jackie Wall. Yeah. We pay tribute to the OG Bruce Definitely. Lee. Bruce and Brandon. and Brandon Lee, you know what I'm saying? That's to the next one. Be like a sequel to That's the next project. To our to our Jackie. And, so now we've got to do it cuz we mentioned it now. <laughs> well, yeah, we <laughs> not, only no do, way, not only not only we got to do it, but we have to uh we have We've to got to outdo. burn. We have to. That's the plan. Yeah, right. We have to outdo our jacket. That's the wall, plan. Man. You know what I'm saying? Look, look. Always up, push and strive yeah, for that's better. Right. So that's right. we're not going to leave that wall until it's, no. it's better than the jacket wall. No. Or at least on the same level, like. No. But if there's one thing I, l I learned from that experience was persistence. Persistence. Yeah. yeah I remember you and taught patience. you. Mm. You taught me that, man. That. That's that's one thing, cause man, I was just, I was sick of like watching like Jackie's face and the proportions were just off. The yeah. car, you know what I mean? The detail just, it wasn't happening, man. Yeah. And I remember you were telling me like, dude, it'll come. Just keep just at keep it. Pushing, keep, keep pushing. pushing You're gonna be push through. You know what I mean? Just do it. And, Don't and, stop. and yeah, slowly yeah. it was getting there. You know what I mean? I was, I was taking mm -hmm. a photo of it and I was analyzing it. Um, after every night, and then I yeah. knew what I needed to change. Maybe the eye needed to be fixed, or the nose needed to be fixed. Chances are, if you get the eyes, the nose, or the mouth wrong, chances oh, are it's not wrong. gonna. Yeah, chances are it's not gonna wrong. look like that. It's not gonna look like the the person or the character. You know what I'm saying? The main thing with characters, I believe, I've always said this: you got to get the eyes right. The yeah. eyes is the most important part mm. of of characters. Like the rest can be sort of okay. But if the eyes are perfect, everyone's going to be like, oh, amazing character because they relate to the eyes. You know what I'm saying? And it also works the other way around. If you have the eyes not great and the rest is perfect, it's not going to look good regardless because you need to get the eyes right. Mm -hmm. So now it turned out very nice. Mm -hmm. You push through, you know what I mean? You push through. Yeah, and I, I do remember as well because, cause, man, after so much struggle getting Jackie right, um, I remember you doing all these effects on the dragon and everything. Highlights. You, highlights shit. coming out of the eyes. The mouth. And then, like, um, yeah, the mouth as well, the bottom, like, the body. I was like, man, I want to do, like, some light on the side of his face. But I did all that work on Jackie. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't want to ruin it by adding any light to it. Yeah. So do I play it safe and not do it? No. And you were like, nah, bro, you know what? And I no. think this 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 was after we were smoking some weed, man, at this at, at the back of my the back some of the crib, weed, man. Some good weed. And you were like, Yeah. You know what, bro? Yeah. I think right up. I think uh <laughs> you should do the lights. Gotta do the lights. Why? Man. Because man, dude, one dude, this this wall's gonna be so famous that you're gonna see the dragon all lit up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then you're gonna regret not doing exactly the MJ. MJ on Jackie, all the way. bro. And I hundred percent. When you said MJ, yeah. bro, that's that 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 hit hard. You know what I mean? I was, I was like, yeah, hundred yeah. percent, man. I remember that. I gotta do it. You know what I mean? You gotta push yourself. You gotta push. Try yourself. things, man. That's one thing I learned, man. Persistence. Try new things. Experiment. Don't settle for just yeah. like, oh, it's it, it's good enough. Yeah. No. Nah. 
don't settle for that shit. No. Just push, push, and push. And 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 you know what, man? It's those lessons that I still apply to my tattooing. Good shit. You know yeah, I mean, yeah, there's yeah, there's yeah. times where I felt like um, I don't know. There's times that I felt like, uh, man, I'm tired. You know, mm. oh, I should just leave it for next time. Mm. You know, mm. or yeah, you know, yeah, like, like that. Oh, that's, that's the brain. That's that's that's, that's, saying, that's good enough. You know, give what I mean? up, or, quit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or you know what? I've worked enough. No. I'm gonna take a break. Yeah, that's, it. that's it. You know what I'm saying? And 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 no man, I rem these these things that I went through before, you know what I mean, being a graffiti artist really prepared me, man, for um for tattooing. Man. For for tattooing, for something right. that was more permanent. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we as graffiti artists had to adapt to our environment, you know what I mean? Just like Bruce Surroundings. Lee's, just like Bruce Lee's quote, "Be water." That's exactly mm. what graph is, bro. Because we had to adapt to rain. If it rained, we had to. Hey, bro. Exactly. We still had to paint. Get the towels you know out. I mean? Yeah. Dry if, the wall. Do the line. Yeah. Dry the wall. Do the line. If like the water, sun, if boom. the sun comes down, so what did we do? Put the high beams up. Put the and we still on, keep man. cracking it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We still do it. We don't have any scaffolding. It's, oh, good. Let's get the ladders out. Ladders. You know what I'm saying? Dude. No excuses. The things we do for just for art, bro. Yeah. It's crazy, man. Sometimes I look back and think, almost killed myself for like, <laughs> actually, like literally, there's been times I could have died, but that's not doing the Jackie. It's more doing other shit, like illegal at night. You don't know where the fuck you're going. You're running and, you know, the next morning you check, oh, wow, I just missed that freaking you know cliff that i didn't had no idea was there at the time and phew, dude mm. some, yeah oh man the graffiti life mm. takes you in some very very sketchy places oh, yeah. man very sketchy places tell Sometime, us tell us a bit yeah. about how you you got into graffiti at the beginning um well whoa well, let's see the first time i ever seen graffiti was um when i seen the movie breakdance one and Breakdance 2, Electric Boogaloo, and also Beat Street. This is all like 80s, 84. Um, so I was maybe eight, seven years old. I'm not too sure. Like, And I just saw some graffiti in the movie. And these um, iconic movies now, they're like full cult classics. I'm sure most of the people who uh, follow graph or hip-hop know about it. Um, so, and that was it. I was just, I just fully gravitated to the culture. But I was only a little kid and I didn't know anyone in the culture itself. I didn't know that there was an actual hip hop culture in Sydney. I thought it was like an American thing. So I just did it on my own at home on paper. Um, it wasn't until it was 1999 that I actually met other graffiti writers. Um, so that's a, that's a big gap where there was, I wasn't doing any graffiti, it was just on paper. Um, and then I met other writers in 1999. And once you meet one writer, that was it. Like, they mm. just introduced you to everybody, the whole culture. And I just went head first straight into the whole scene and haven't stopped since because all my peers were already doing it for a long time. So I had to play catch up. I had to play mm. catch up big time. I wanted to be as good as all my peers. So I would go out by myself, I would, I would paint by myself. Um, and just and just keep going, um, you know, trying to catch up to my peers. And the next thing you know, like all the boys, like my crew, my peers are asking me to do their highlights, mm. you know, or fix their letters or whatever, man, like, bro, or do characters or whatever. And I'm thinking, okay, well, I think I've um, made made it, you know what I mean, to where I want to get. Yeah. But then, nah, you like, I'm the type where I want to just keep striving for just more and more and more. Mm. I'm never happy. Like I'm, I'm, I'm never satisfied um, where with where I'm at or with my artwork. I never am. I'm just I always say I'm yeah. I'm only halfway through what I want to do. I'm only halfway through my my potential. And that and I always and say I think that. that's what we have in common. It's the same spirit of Bruce Lee, same spirit of Kobe Bryant, Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, MJ. You know what I mean? It was just go that MJ with it. Always improving, always become better. Yeah, that's you a song that we have. You know, go MJ, mm -hmm. which means that is the saying where we have. Stuff. That's which, which means pretty much, 
to go as far as you can to perfection, as close as you can to yeah. perfection. There's no second thinking like, should I do this? No, do it mm. and and be the best at it. There's no there's no ifs or buts. You have to be the best at what you do, or at least at least put 100% effort. And that's MJ, you know mm. what I mean? Jordan, Jackson, you name it. Um, they went, they were the best at their craft. And mm. it's all it's it's all up here. So yeah, you just that's right. To, it's just persistence and consistency, and just push and yeah. just and believe. You know what I mean? So and 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 that's the thing. Sometimes <laughs> it can be a fine line between being arrogant and oh, you got to be humble with and, it. Yeah. And, and competitive. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I like to say I'm competitive. Yeah, you know what same. I mean? Very. I like to be competitive. I'm very. Yeah. You know, what I mean, call call it egocentric if you want, but man, it's it's that ego that gets you out of bed at a certain time. You know what I'm saying? It's that ego that makes that paycheck. You know what I'm saying? It's that ego that 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 gets you to to get your name out there and and create great artwork. So, I mean, there's good ego and there's bad ego. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I always strive for greatness. You yeah. know what I mean? Never settle for mediocre. No. You know what I mean? Because, man, I remember Alan Padilla. Um, sh shout out to Alan, by the way. One of the uh, famous uh, Latino uh, tattoo artists. He was actually the guy who tattooed my back. One thing I learned from him, man, was uh, he said to me, I always try to look at every tattoo like as if I was going to die tomorrow. His last one, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. How would I want to leave my mark? When he said that to me, man, that mm. that hit deep. You know what I'm saying? Because you want to leave uh, an impression. A legacy. A legacy. Mm. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. it's funny, now, you know, we, we, we're talking about Bruce. <clears throat> Bruce Leone died at 32. That's crazy, man. But he only did six or seven movies. And, you know, we yeah. st we're still talking about Bruce 40 years later. He's easily the, one of the most influential Definitely. people, like, ever, like, yeah. in history. We're, we're, we're talking about, like, before Van Damme. Before him. Before Van, Van Damme. Before but Bruce, Ali. Bruce was already, like, the first, like, Sex Mixed symbols, artist as well. but like the first sex symbols too. You know what I mean? That was, was showing yeah. off his muscles and abs. You know what I mean on TV. He was the first for a lot of things, Bruce. You know what I mean? Man. He uh, inspired hip hop as well. Mm, B boys, rap, all that. You know, style. And 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 he's only done yeah. seven movies, bro. Thirty three. Died at thirty three. That's crazy. Thirty two to be exact. Man, you know I didn't I mean? do shit till I was like forty. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've done my things, but at thirty-two, that's young, man. Like, yeah, I'm thirty-three now. Yeah, I've I've already you like, see, and you still, still, you and still, I still got, haven't you, become a potential. Legend yet. Exactly. So your potential is still growing. His potential yeah. would have still been, yeah, still been growing. I mean, uh, he was ahead of his time. I mean, you know, so, wow. Bruce saw things back in the sixties and seventies. The way we see things now, which tells you he's a, he was ahead of his time, ahead, you way, know, and and way. and you know back then, you know, in the sixties and seventies, man, you know how racist those times were, where they were they were totally against teaching the martial arts, you know, what I mean, to Especially non that he was teaching it to that non Chinese, yeah, 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 just you know what I'm saying. It, 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 this is not bad, dude. Hey. This is kind of like art, bro. You know what I'm saying? Where you never really, from the generation that we came up with, mm. we we came from a generation where we didn't really teach our art to anybody because it was almost like a secret weapon. At least, mm. tattooing always was. It was a skill that was never really taught. To this day, there is no college, there is no university for tattooing. There is no degree for it. It's something that has to be earned. You know. Respect, you know 100%. what I mean? Exactly, and the same thing like with graph, bro. There is no degree for it. All those skills you learn, it has to be passed down either by a mentor or the streets teach research, you. study. That's yeah. it. It's yeah. mainly yeah. just schooling, yeah. Exactly, mentors. You know what I'm saying? And and uh, dude, yeah, can't wait to do the Bruce and 
Brandon Lee. I'm doing Bruce, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing, doing Brandon. Brandon. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. It's going to be an honor, man. Do you have a spot yet for that? You're organizing that, yeah? Mm -hmm. You're onto that. Got some it's going to be in Dixon. Dixon. Oh, it's got to yeah. be in Dixon. It's got to be in Dixon. You know the it's wall that uh, Peque and me, by the way, shout out to El Gran mm. Peque. Rancholo. No, que onda, Rancholo. El, El Gran Peque, you know what I mean? Another uh, Mexican graffiti artist that um, really influenced me in the in the graph game. And it's cool to say that he's both of our friends, you and mine. Mm. Um, still influences good me. Friend. Still influences me Talented today. Artist. Very talented, man, you know. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be near the wall that we did together. Mm -hmm. Not not f not far from where we did the Jackie. Oh, nice. Yeah. Chinatown, it's got to be done there. Yeah. Wow, we still got to get um, our photos, reference. Mm. Look how big, man, that, look how big we look compared to the wall. Oh, this is the other wall um, with Becca, right? Yeah, yeah, that's near where we're going to do our Bruce wall. I haven't seen this wall, man. I should go check it out. Yeah, we'll go check it out, man, after having some sushi or something, man. Yeah. Dicko is going to be buddy popping mm. after this. Mm, for real. Nice. Yeah, that was a big wall, too. How, how about you guys? Where did you guys link up? Where? Oh, oh how? We linked up. Oh, how? Yeah. Oh, I'll, right. I'll share this one. So <laughs> how this happened was I think uh, I, I was already a professional uh airbrush artist at this point um and i was already known for airbrushing t-shirts for the homies you know ash and and the crew you know doing his logo and all that and screen printing i was a graphic designer at the same time uh and my cousin you know had uh you know bought some mtn paint and he's like dude oh nelson Nelson, yeah, yeah, yeah Nelson yeah. bought like some paint and he was like, dude, check this paint out. It's MTN, it comes from Spain. Mm. Check how smooth the paint uh -huh. comes out. Look at the flow, look at the colors. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, and I'm like, mm, man, I want to learn how to do that. And some jobs came to me, some commission work came to me that were, it was so big that I knew that if I was to airbrush, bro, it would have taken me months to complete. I mean, don't get me wrong, I had all the time because I didn't have a proper job. But time is money. Mm -hmm. So I was like, dude, if only I knew how to graph, I could smash that wall easy in a few days. You know, yeah. I just needed to learn how to graph and, and do images and shit. I you know what I mean? I, I, I was already practicing like doing letters, but it was definitely toy. You know what I mean? I'll admit that. And he, him and me had a falling out at that time. You know, as, yeah. fam as family do, you know. But uh, he left the paint there. And he told me he got it from Liverpool in Sydney. Mm. So I typed in on my phone, uh, MTN Liverpool. Yeah. Bro, it actually linked me to uh, Warwick Farm. Warwick oh, Farm? Weather Park? Isn't that Weather Park. Weather Park, yeah. MTN, the MTN and MTN Weather Park, shop. yeah. So I thought it was the same shop, only that it's just different location. And then I think you answered the phone. You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did we're, I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're in Warwick Farm. Uh, we're we're behind. Weatherill Park. Yeah, we're behind <laughs> the shops and all. Yeah, Weatherill Park. Yeah, yeah. It was a hard place to find, but anyway, I found the joint. I showed up, and that's when I saw you and Jimmy there from SFX Crew and oh, shit. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, I was trying to buy some colors so I could like you know mm, practice mm, like some mm. pieces and stuff like that. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, at that point, I had already mentioned El Peque. I was like, oh, bro, you know, you know El Peque? And you're like, yeah, bro, that's my carnal, you know what I mean? It's mm. my homeboy right there, you know? Um, you know, uh, you know, that's we're all it. Latinos and stuff like that. 100%. And I'm like, bro, you're Latino? You're like, yeah, bro, si. from Bolivia. And then, bro, all the, that was the that was first that was point where we, yeah, that was our link, dude. And then I'm like, you guys are graph writers? And you're like, yeah, yeah. And you show me some of your work. And I was like, bro, the, this shit is tight. Like letters were, boom, mm -hmm. the the proportions were like on fire, bro. Amazing, amazing. amazing. The the <laughs> <laughs> the colors were just popping. I was like, all right, this guy's definitely not toy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I I just I was straight away hooked, bro. I was just like, dude, can you teach me? You know, that was it. I remember. Yeah. Can you teach yeah. me? And and I was just like 
king, bro. I was just like, dude, I want to learn. I want to learn. I want to learn. Like, bro, I was willing 100%. to just come up to Sydney whenever you were painting, and I, I just wanted to be a sponge and be like your disciple. You know what I'm saying? And we kicked it off. Yeah, that man. Point. And I could and see the passion and the drive that you wanted to learn. So. Yeah, man. I mean, bro, yeah, man. there there's some people that can't even get up to go to the gym, man. You know what I mean? But I was willing to drive from mm. here to Sydney just to, you know, learn from you, dude. Mm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? For, for, an art, volumes. for an art that, you know, was not guaranteed to get you paid. Oh, no. You, well, you know no what I'm saying? Money. Yeah, there was no money. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like... It, this, this is what uh, I was going to say, like with Bruce, how he saw things ahead of time where he didn't really care about whether you, you were black, white, mm. Asian, man. As long as you had a good heart, he was willing to share the art to you. And I felt that you you had the, a, a similar thing going on. Definitely. That, you you know, can tell with you, people. You didn't really care as, as, as long as you saw that the person had a good heart, you're willing to help him, you know. And you was an artist. I could see that you was an artist. Yeah. Like you were airbrushing stuff, you're drawing. And, yeah, we just kicked it off, man. You just, I yeah. don't know, you just, it's hard to explain sometimes where you just get that, the connection. Yeah. With certain people. We there connected. Was, and there we was the B-Boy painting. too, man. And, and, and it's, you know. And the breaking, yeah. Yeah, you linked me up with the, like, with B-Boy Exit. Oh, that was a funny one, man. That was, was talking funny, talking about. Man. Like yeah. one of one of your heroes was was um from B Boy Exit, Oz, yeah B Boy also from B, Fire B Boy C's and little did he know he was in my car and we were driving to see him yeah man dude, that, <laughs> that was, was that like was dude hectic. like who you talking about we're like run out like we're meeting him now today and you're like no way and then we ended up meeting Bill from Rapid Fire B Boy nah, Exit it was doing it was, a tattoo I done my first tattoo that day and shit. Yeah, let me let me talk let me talk about that because that was dope, man. We uh, because I remember we were going to Newtown, and uh, you were like, "Dude, I'm gonna take you to Newtown, bro. Like it's like Graph Central right here, dude. Mm. I'm gonna get you like just inspired and stuff. Just look for inspiration, and then you were showing me like you know this this other writer called Bones, and you were telling me study this guy Bones because letters he's letters are clean." Easily to read. Proportions. He's clean. You know, he's clean and everything. And I was like, yeah, 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 dope, dope, dope. And I think we were with Fab at the time. He was in the car. And then uh, you were like, dude, after this. Hiccups. Yeah. Hiccups, yeah. SFX. From SFX. Shout Queen. out, brother. Yeah, bro. And then we were like, dude, after this, we're going to link up with uh, with this guy called uh, called uh, Exit also. No, oh. broke. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, we're going to be yeah, doing yeah. a tattoo on Duncan. My first tattoo. Like, on Duncan, yeah, dude, dude. and then you were telling me like you know, oh yeah, you know him and his brother, you know what I mean like they hooked up uh, the hype magazine and stuff back in the day, the old school guys, you know what I'm saying? And then I'm putting two and two together. I'm like, hype twins, B boy all stars, B rapid fire. I was on those like, dude, have you ever heard of the B boy all stars? You're like, yeah. yeah, dude, he's from the from the B boy all stars. You know, little did we know you were already following him from the graph. From his, you know, mm. graffiti, him and his brother C's. Yeah, KOC. And I was following him from the B-boying. Right. You know what I mean? Because yeah. back, back in 91, these guys were in uh, Star Search. That's right. Bro, 80s. like, my, my memory is that good that I could have been... You would have been five or something. Nah, or I was three years old, Whoa. bro. I was three That's years old. That's how impactful that I image was, I was three was. years old and I saw B Boy All Stars for the first time on TV. Mm. Like that memory is so vivid, vivid still. Yeah. And shout out to Exit and C's, yeah, man. man. Like, these Whoa. guys inspired, man. Hype Mag, B Boy X and C's. I used to replicate. KFC. I used to replicate their performances from Star mm. Search, and I, I used to rewind the tape, put their moves in slow motion. I think, bro, if if we look back far enough, there's actually VHS recordings of there me is. Oh, no, right. no 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 v- oh, right. like VHS recordings of me oh, okay. as a home three, videos home yeah. videos yeah. from a as as a three year old kid yeah um mimicking B Boy All Stars. You know what yeah. I mean? That's them. That's them. There we go. That's them. B Boy All Stars. Exit and these, these guys back in the den were the cleanest B boys. Bill and Jamie like doing their thing. 
Oh man, it's been an honor, like knowing yeah. Bill and being a good friend with Bill. He's actually in our crew now, NSO. Shout out to NSO yeah. crew. Um, is that Busk? No, I can't, no, no, I can't no. tell. The, the footage is not. I think that's Busk. Could have been. Yeah. But yeah, like this is the 80s, right? Yeah, these guys were the ones that pretty much uh, created many of the power moves, the head spin ball. Legendary. One handed uh, halos. Boys, man. That, that was, uh, yeah, these, these guys were actually from Canberra originally. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, these guys were originally from Canberra. 100%. Yeah, yeah. they moved up to yeah. Brisbane. They moved around a lot. Brisbane. So Australia was kind of at the forefront of this. Yeah. Sort of yeah, yeah. These early guys, on. In that very early, early on. These guys put Australia yeah, on the map with, with, with their whole B boy. This, this is what I, I mean, was telling Rack Rilla. You know what I mean? These guys were the kings. Uh-huh. They were the kings. Back then. 100%. And these guys were from Canberra. Not only. Um, nationally, but internationally, yeah. they were they were known to European b boys, American Air B-boys. Force crew b boys from the uh, from LA from mm. the states. They used to exchange and um, send each other with Lil Caesar um, VHS tapes because because they were all like competing to who had the best head spins back in the, the day, the biggest powers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, the the best powers. Yeah. So what was it about Australia? Do you think that fostered this kind of scene? I was definitely because of the fact that um, Beat Street, Breakdance 1 and 2, it came out in cinemas in Australia at the same time that it came out in the cinemas in the States. Right. So that's where you get all your old school um, uh, B-boys and, and writers because that's what started the whole scene were the, were the three cult classic movies, the Beat Street, the Breakdance, mm-hmm. and then you also had Style Wars and Wild Style. But see, these movies came out, they're from the States, yeah. But they also came out yeah. at Hoyts in Australia as well at the same time. Yeah. And those movies so inspired. It inspired the you whole, know, all of, you know, everyone. everyone from that era in Australia and stuff. Exactly. So we have a lot of old school heads here uh, yeah. from back in the day where in Asia and South America, they didn't release these movies um, like in the 80s. So you won't have any old school heads in those right. countries. But right. here we were lucky enough that they did release these movies and influence the whole country. Yeah. That's so, interesting. Yeah. So. Yeah. The, the and these guys can still head spin, man. Yeah. Well, that's what I was saying, man. You they're remember like fifty? They'll be like fifty years old now because I remember they were, they were born nineteen seventy one, same year as my plus. mom. But you remember like oh, what happened? Crazy, dude. <laughs> you remember like what like what happened? When we were painting at Miller. You remember when we were doing the cantinflas and stuff, and and yeah. uh, you were doing your Swayze piece there. We were doing a collab. Mm. Uh, I think uh, Exit happened? Exit was painting with us like for a little bit. He was hanging out with us and painting with us. In Bonnery, was it? In Bonnery? Nah, or in Miller. In, in Miller. In Miller? He, his piece was next to mine. It was a it was a broke piece. We oh, just, we just talk of course. About, we just talking about Bieber and all now. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then... Uh, the broke piece. Bro, we, we were just in a B-boy mood, man. We like, bro. Did we throw down? Did we throw we down? We did throw down, but we're like, nah, man, fuck this shit, man. We're 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 gonna get dirty, man, because we were like b boying on the cement, and you know what I mean. That's how you do. I want to throw, throw down some head spins, but I couldn't do it on the cement, bro. I didn't no, have any helmet, helmet nothing. No, helmet. So we're like, dude, let's let us let us go to a uh, street uni. We did uh, in Liverpool, Liverpool yeah. street uni. Yeah, we got a room and and uh, studio. We didn't get a room. <laughs> yeah, we didn't get a room. Even that sounded funny for me. I was like, <laughs> there was no bed. <laughs> it was lino. <laughs> <laughs> we got a studio. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that was nice. Mystery, yeah. shout out to Mystery Street. Yeah, Uni. Mis- yeah Mystery. He runs OG. that place in, uh, in Liverpool. Yeah, Mystery is definitely uh, and, OG. Yeah, and we started battling. Yeah, we started battling, dude. And bro, with, at, with at, Bill. I think Bill, Bill at that time was easy, 45, 46 at the time. Yeah. And he was still like smashing his windmills, man. And not only that, still comboing windmills, popping yeah. them up to head spins. I was like, man. I fired, I fired him up. I remember that. I fired yeah, him up. Because I was coming at him like, let's go. Let's do this. Boom. Throw yeah, him him. And he I just was... went off, dude. It was like, whoa. Like, dude. That, that, that was impressive, man. And I think the fact that, you know, me being such a young cat compared to them, they were they were like tripped out to see that, you know, yeah, they had influenced me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They were tripped out. What, what do you think, um, like, that kind of t- era of graffiti, the breaking, and the hip-hop, 
sort of change the scene. But compared to now, you don't really see that that much anymore with the new guys. What do you think that mm. difference is in that kind of community now? It's definitely gone more individual based um, with all the art forms, with the graffiti, with the b-boying. It's just like individuals now. There's mm. no more no, you dope know crews. There's no more crews. And each individual only masters one art form. Mm. Back in the 80s and even 90s, um, you had to be a writer, you had to be boy and rap. Like that was just normal, you know. Actually. Yeah, that's what I was saying before, you know what I mean? Now it's just you pick one and you run with it. Yeah. Not, on, not only that, but, you know, now, like, this is what really uh, upsets me about, you know, art today and artists is that everything... It do, it's not really about the skill or the talent about an artist anymore. Now it's just what's trending at the time. Social media. Mm. Social media is really... Likes. It's, it's changed it's everything. Yeah, it's now, all about man. fame. And some people are getting attention that, you know, that really aren't so talented, yeah. aren't so skillful, you know? 100%. It's, you know, and, and unfortunately, you know, people just like what's trending. You yeah. know what I mean? Social media, internet. But back back then, all those guys, you know, they were known for being unique, being original, having style. You had to be original. Yeah. Um, now it's almost the opposite. Like they don't, no one cares for originality. It's oh. you have to just copy whatever's hot. That's it. What's, that's whatever's it. trending. And you get mm. all the likes. Mm. Of course, you're going to get all the likes because you're doing something that. Everyone's already on the bandwagon mm -hmm. about, you know what I mean? But no, like in the 80s and 90s, it was about originality. That's right. So everybody was different. Everyone had a unique flavor. And and sadly, and these like, are the people that are making money. Yeah. Sad enough, these are the guys that are making money. And the talented mm -hmm. ones mm -hmm. are broke as a joke. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's a sad fact, you know what I'm saying? And That's not the only, artist, the yeah. artist's life. Uh, not only that, <laughs> yeah. but you know, yeah. we 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 uh we live in a in a generation where, you know, people are easily offended too. Oh man, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so yeah. you can't tell the truth. You can't s no. tell another artist. Oh, look, that's whack. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it's inappropriate or it's gonna hurt his feelings. Whereas back in the day, bro, if we were told we were toys or if we were whack. What the fuck did that like? What did that teach us? Step your game. Step up. your game yeah. up. Practice. And you know I wonder I mean? if that's like a, a part of that community aspect of what's kind of lost. Is it before you were surrounded by all these people that could tell you to your face like work Be on honest, that, yeah. do this differently, or don't do that, or do this. Yeah. But now people are stuck by themselves. They mm. don't necessarily have that um, constructive. That's right, man. Criticism like around them. Because I enjoy actually giving giving um, constructive, constructive criticism. criticism. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's something that I enjoy process. doing. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I do it with him. I do it with everyone mm. around me. And I tell them, look, no offense, but I'm trying to actually bring the best out of you. I'm trying to help you evolve and improve. Um, there's no point of me saying, oh, man, that's amazing. You're the best. And then just leave it at that. Like, what's he going to gain? What's he or she going to gain from mm. me saying, oh, that's amazing. It's great. And that's it. Like mm -hmm. no one's helping anyone. That's you know right. What I'm saying I'd you rather help wrong. and say, look, yeah, these parts are good, but you need to do this better, that better, work on that. Mm -hmm. And then that person's next piece is gonna evolve um, and improve. Yeah. Man. That's the whole point mm -hmm. of being an artist. Like you can't take things personal. Like that you're a perfect artist. As artists, we're never perfect yeah. anyway. You're gonna learn till the day. You know till the end of that's it like until the end you you, you constantly learn and, and evolve you never master like the true art you know what i'm saying it's like always learning always a student and be humble so mm. but yeah like you said these days man oh, people dude. are too offended man you know so it's just that soft generation like yeah. i won't get you know, i won't get too deep into that shit but it's a very fucking yeah. soft generation that's i don't mind man i think like, i think people need to hear it dude yeah I would I, love someone to be honest to me and tell me, look, your artwork's not that great. You can improve it this way or that way. Great. Awesome. I can fix it. I can be better. Mm. But you tell a young kid nowadays and they get their, their feelings hurt, ego hurt, whatever, mm. or they think, oh, you're too cool. You're trying to diss them. 
Yeah. It's a soft generation. Man. I mean, Seriously. the only reason, you know what I mean, why I've come as far as I've come was because I had people telling me that I was shit. People telling me that I still need to practice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that's the only reason because that pushed me to it improve. Mm. I mean, I remember, you know what I mean, when I was learning, you know, you used to tell me like, bro, like I got to tell you like you got to work on your proportions a little bit more. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it took me I don't know how long before I could, you know, throw a proper burner. You know what I mean? This stuff doesn't happen overnight. You know, dude. And and mm. when you said that to me, man, because I knew it came from a good place as well, never took it to heart. But what it made Shoot. me do, what it made me do was, bro, and this is the thing, I had the time because I was, dude, I never really had a full-time job. The two jobs I had at this time was working in the public service, casual, and then working at a restaurant washing dishes. So my escape was painting, was art. Hmm. You know what I mean? What now is my career was just fun for me back then you know yeah. so i had the time to practice and i was practicing and i've set myself a goal i'm gonna practice every day i'm gonna do a piece every day and i remember mm -hmm. like every day i was just like uh, taking a photo sending it to you be like bro check this out what do you think that's it you know and you, you you know you give me feedback you're like dude this needs fixing maybe that you know what i mean and then it got to a point where you were like dude you've actually improved a lot you exactly. know what i mean of course. And and then that's when we started doing our collabs, which then eventually led to our Jackie wall. But I needed that push. A lot of pushing, actually. Yeah. yeah man, I need, I need it. There was a lot you know, that I remember. Yeah. There. But now send me photos all the time. Like, yeah. what do I need to fix? Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. But nowadays, yeah. it's, you know, you can't tell a kid that now, man. Yeah. It's you know hard. Man? It's hard. And uh, and when and that's some the thing. kids. I mean, you always gonna get some kids that are still humble and you know can accept. There's a few kids out there that you know more than happy to help. But in general, yeah, like mm. as long as the kids get enough likes on their IG, yeah, they're happy with that. And that's and, it. and you that's know what's the other thing? When this when opportunities ridiculous. when opportunities are given to them on a silver platter. You know what I mean? They feel entitled. They mm -hmm. get a little bit of an ego. I've done seen it so many times, bro, in the in the art world, when they didn't know shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And you've shown them a little bit, and then yeah. you know what I mean? They get an ego boost. Ego is the biggest killer. Man. You know what I'm saying? I've seen I've seen hum I've seen it happen to humble guys too. Mm -hmm. People right. that start off humble. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then you know they they get good. They got given an opportunity. Be why? Because <clears> it was easy. The opportunity was given to them on a silver mm -hmm. platter, but when you have to work for it and you have to grind for it, dude, you appreciate it so much. Yeah. Your energy comes off different. It's different. It's different. You know um, what I'm saying? It's like a different um, foundation or upbringing of your art. Yeah. But it's true. It's something that reminds me of what Michael Jordan used to say: like, if someone doesn't work for their success, um. Yeah, you just, it's just, it's not the same. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you've got to battle through the tears, the sweat. And That's it. once you make it to the top, it's a lot more, um, what do you call it? Um, what's the word? More, more gratification. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll, sh I'll share this story, man. And this happened when um, I met Mr. Cartoon. We talked about Cartoon, you know. One of the OGs from LA, bro. You know, mm -hmm. I was getting an impression with with cartoon. This the year would have been two thousand and ten, um, if I can recall. Twenty ten. Yeah, man. I remember. These were the conditions, man. Mm. The conditions were. Look, when you work with me, I normally take on people that don't know how to draw, so that way. It goes back to what we were talking about, Bruce Lee. Empty your cup. Empty everything you know. Mm. Forget about everything you know. Yeah. Learn again from scratch. Exactly. So that's what he was doing. You know, what I mean? but doing that just gets you into the game. Because then after that means you gotta wipe the floors, clean the toilets. Oh, dude. You know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, you gotta For sort out his appointment books. Oh man. You know what I mean? And then For how long though? 
check this out. He was like, and then on top of that, you got to clean my rims, vacuum the cars, because we're a car company as well. You know, because he had the low yeah. riders. The low riders, yeah. You know what I mean? And then <clears throat> when you're done with that, you're going to go get us some Starbucks. Oh. Go bring dude. us some food. And you're going to be Did working. You want a hand job with that? Or was it? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. He's missed the cartoon. You know what I mean? Keep that off air, but. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't go there, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was getting everyone to work from Monday to Saturday, so you only had Sundays off, and you that's was, abuse, man. Like straight up. <laughs> yeah, you, you can call it exploitation. that exploitation. Yeah, hundred percent. It's funny. Um, I think it's abuse if you're not getting paid for it. Oh, well, definitely. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just but like, and, this is where I'm trying to get at is that. It was Monday to Saturday, and you were working. You start work at 9 in the morning. Sometimes you won't be leaving till 10, 11 o'clock at night. Oh, man. Come you know on. what I'm saying? And Oof. and I was like, well, this no. this, this, that can't roll this was insane. Yeah. Then I was working with some other asshole in fucking in, in Washington. I spoke of this before. Hmm. I thought things were going to get better, bro. The grass is never greener on the other side. It never is, and... You know, now that I'm a mm. tattoo artist, been doing it professionally for five years, you know, I've shared with you that I've been working six days a week, seven days a week, sometimes for 28 days straight. And now I understand why Cartoon was getting us to work the way that he expected us to back then, back in 2010. Because sometimes this is what it takes to be Cartoon. This is what he would have had to have done back then. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I don't feel that a master is gonna get you to do something if he couldn't do it himself. If he's getting the if he's getting you to do something, it's because it is possible. You know what I'm saying? Nothing is impossible. Do so. you look back on that time now as a positive, or you or you wish you? Didn't, oh, you definitely didn't do learn it. something. Definitely, from. definitely a positive thing because yeah, these experiences. Uh, form your character. Yeah, this forms your character. You know what I mean. Not only that, you know what I mean. Um, when you succeed through these little obstacles, mm -hmm. through the storm, you know what I mean. You will. You you have earned the right to call yourself an artist to have that title. You know what I mean. Not only that, it shapes you for when you do become an artist. Mm. It shapes you for when you have to work those late nights. When you have to work on a client grind. that's yeah. difficult. You have to grind. You know what I mean? There's or, no way around it. Mm. Yeah, but, you know, again, it comes to adapting. This will teach you to adapt. Because not all days are going to be good. Not every client's going to be good. Mm. Every skin is different. Every tattoo is different. One day you might get black and gray. The next day might be color. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this and 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 that's the thing. Like this is why ever ever since I started tattooing, I said to myself, I want to be the best at black and gray. The best that I can be. You know what I mean? And now that I'm kind of like um decent at it, you know, I've been trying to break away from being the black and gray guy because that's the kind of title that I have right now in Canberra, being the black and gray realism guy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just want to be known as an artist, man. An artist that gets, you know, an artist that does the best work that he possibly can than just be a black and gray guy. You always know? expand, yeah. Yeah, I always like to explore on different with different mediums. That's how I went from airbrush to graph, from graph to tattooing. Before that, c cooking, working in the kitchen, that was an art. I love cooking, man. B-boying, that was shit. an art. Cooking's the shit, bro. You know what I mean? And, and funny, that's I mentioned before, is that all these different arts, mm. you know it's what linked. I mean? It's all linked. It all linked together, and it's life. You know what I mean? And it teaches you it's flow. All flavors. It's all flavors. All man. flavors. It's you all cook, flow. You're adding flavor. Tattoo. Mm. 
do a certain line or, or an angle. It gives it flavor, letters, characters. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So when you definitely. find when you find your flow, that's when you realize life is flow. Water. Mm-hmm. It always it always comes back to Bruce, doesn't it, man? It does. Like, <laughs> Bruce. That guy was so intelligent, though. Like, dude, seriously. Like on all that, you know, philosophy side of things. Yeah, oh, man. That's what I'm saying, man. The brother was uh, definitely ahead of his time. Hundred percent. Five foot what, lethal weapon. What about your process? So as I've often wondered, with with graph stuff. Your um, your your illegal stuff. It's almost not just the painting of it. It's getting to the spots and finding those spots. And what does that. how does that process go into? And and was that the part that you enjoy too? Like that sort of exploration side of it. Can I add to that question? Yeah, yeah. What adding from what um, Nick just asked? Does the adrenaline? Mm. play a uh, main part course, in that time. too that was one of the the uh, first aspects of graffiti was the adrenaline the rush the adventure mm-hmm. the fact of getting chased and getting away because i was always or I getting was caught good, or... getting caught wasn't that much fun <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, and honestly i didn't i never like i would usually get away like i was always that one dude in the crew just ninja bro like i would get away if i had to jump roof house to roof house i'm getting away and i've always i've always enjoyed a good a good run a good chase so it linked up with the whole graffiti thing it was like fun bro like you know what i'm saying like it's just fun like so yeah definitely the adventures on getting to the wall and leaving the wall sometimes is more fun than actually what you're doing at the actual wall yeah. Like the amount of stories that I have, just just getting to a spot, or just or trying to leave a spot, or trying to get away from a spot, man. Um, sometimes they're well, yeah, a lot more fun than the actual the actual painting itself, and more like it sticks in your memory the stories. Um, Give us a couple of those. Oh I'm man, sure. <laughs> keen to hear some of those. Well, well. You can pick your country first. What what oh, country? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because, dude. Oh, I mean, all right. Well, let's let's. I wanted to talk about your um, a story that I watched a while from yours about the the uh, the Rio favelas. Oh, Brazil, yeah. Rio de Janeiro. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, some of these I might not be able to um, like fully explain, <laughs> but. But yeah, that that city is is, is nuts. Um, I went into the favelas. Most people are like, dude, what are you doing in the favelas? Like, I was getting messages online, Instagram, whatever, because um, I'd put up stories of um, what I was doing. This is one of them, right? Oh, here we go. Yeah, this is one of them. That's the that's a very famous favela. Um, it's got the name up there, Complexo, Iliman, and. The only reason how I got access, oh, there was a shooting the day after that I actually did my piece. And that's actual real photos from local graffiti writer, friend of mine, who sent me that. That's in Bolivia. Um, my mother in Bolivia. Um, that's another whole different story. I mean, I, I've, been told, I've been told many times I should just like write a book because mm. the amount of things that I've oh, experienced yeah. overseas in Brazil, in Bolivia, in Japan... Berlin, New York, Bronx, Mexico. Dude, like, man, money doesn't buy these experiences that I went mm. through. Like, I'm very grateful because it does form your character, your personality. Mm. It changes you. You come back. I mean, you know, when I done my world trip in 2009, I did um, yeah, 12 countries in eight months all backpack, just graffiti vacation, just bombing and, you know, whatever, partying, obviously sightseeing and all that i try to you know keep a balance of everything not just bomb and grab like party sightsee check all the spots meet people really experience it like everything the culture experience the yeah. culture um i don't want to just show up to la or new york for like three days or even five days hell no wherever i went i stayed for 
three weeks minimum, three weeks, and I would get on the public transport. I would try the local food, paint meet the, the local with public people. Transport. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like the buses or trams or trains or track sides, whatever. Like I want to experience the real nitty gritty like of living the country. Like the local. Exactly. Well, exactly. Like local. You know so meet the locals. Don't be scared. Um, and do what the locals do and just fit in, you know what I mean? Um, and lucky for me, speaking Spanish and being Latino, like a lot of the countries, mm -hmm. they speak Spanish, in, you know, second language, like LA, New York, Spanish it was cool. Spain, Spanish again, Bolivia, Spanish. So there was a lot of places where I went where I could use, you know, like Mexico, Spanish again. But you know what Rio, though? You know, it's it's not just Portuguese. The, but, it's it's not you know. just the fact that you speak Spanish and all that, but I think um, it's also how you're not judgmental as well, and because of that, you're able to connect with so much more people because you're a mm. lot more accepting to different cultures and oh yeah, diff I love diff cultures. Different people. And, the more know. different the person is, the more intrigued I am about them. I want to find out about their, yeah. their culture. Um, and that's so, almost an attitude that you got to have when you're in places you're like mm. those uh, you got a big dodgy streaming. areas and stuff. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Like Relating that, to people. That gets you by. Like, yeah. It's how yeah. you survive yeah. almost. Like, like 100%. 100%. Like what happened to you in Mexico, uh, that was – you getting out of that was just, you know, you relating to those people. Yeah. yeah. Well, you have to relate. You have, you have to, to relate, bro. Humble you know? and relate to the people and respect um, you're talking about that story with the with the cholos that approached me on, under the bridge. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Th those those guys, was, those guys was, were ready to cap you. That was a very sketchy moment. Yeah, I was at this um, a graffiti event um, in I always forget the city, but it was a beautiful city in Mexico, a small city. I can't remember the name. Damn it. Anyway, so and there was a graffiti event, and it was just female graffiti event just female graphers only there must have been about 15 if not 20 mm. female graffiti artists was it a meeting and of styles event no no it wasn't meeting of styles it was like a local local mm. event okay. organized by um in mexico and i was going out with one of the girls so she was invited she was an right. artist she was invited so we, we went together and it was cool like but i couldn't just stand there and watch all these people paint so i got some paint I jumped onto the track sides um, and went for a walk and went for a bomb. Um, I was having a few bees. I was a bit intoxed, so I didn't realize it was getting late. And I didn't realize how far I was walking on, on the tracks. And the next minute, I'm under this bridge. I just finished doing this throw up. And these three cholos pull up behind me. Um, one of them was full bunny clubbed up hands in pocket ready to just pounce and i'm just like dudes like well what's what's going on here i wasn't aware like i was drunk bombing mm -hmm. and all of a sudden i've got this issue and everyone knows with the cholos and the mexicans like the gangs yeah. or whatever you know how, how they get you down. don't yeah you don't want to cross their territories you don't want to be in their space no. um so i was obviously in a space where I wasn't welcome. Mm. And they made it very clear, started pushing me around. I had to stand my ground. It was either I stand my ground or I run. But if I run, I could get shot, I could get stabbed. I don't know. So I thought, fuck it, I'm not going to run. I'm going to stand my ground. And I don't know how I got away with it. Um, they asked me actually where I'm from in Spanish. So luckily I spoke some Spanish, but they could tell that I wasn't a local. So they were like a little bit intrigued, like, like where the fuck are you from, dude? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and I told them, and they were like, actually, they said, are you from the west or east side? And I was like, oh shit, okay. Either is, answer could he get you yeah, killed? Exactly. So they're like, east or west side? So I'm thinking, shit, okay. In my head, I'm thinking, this is a 50 50 chance of, of uh, surviving yeah, or live or die. Or what's, you know what I'm saying? Because, yeah. anyways. And I'm thinking, fuck, wait, I'm from Miller, right? Miller, Southwest. You know, I'm thinking in my <laughs> head, Southwest. So I just said, West, bro. And they're like, West Side? I'm like, yeah, man. Like, Sydney, Miller. And they're like, 
They couldn't believe that I was from Australia. <laughs> they couldn't believe it. They're telling him, like, are you, are you going to the Australia, Sydney way? And I could hear that, the talk, and I'm thinking, what the fuck's he doing here? Because it was a small city. It wasn't like mm. Mexico City or Cancun. It was like a, like was a like local a, area. It was like, like probably as big as Queen They don't, they don't see like people from, from overseas. Mm. And they're like, whoa, man, this guy's from the other side of the, of the planet, literally. You were like a so were extra ter- you were like an extraterrestrial yeah, so bro, to these guys. They were like, and they like, they're like, oh, that's your throw up way, and I'm like, yeah, that's my throw up, man. Next minute, they're getting selfies. We're getting selfies, loco. And that, I was like, wow, that was a close one, bro. Seriously, that was a very close call. If I would have said east, it would have been a different story. I just happened to say west because I was from Miller, <laughs> southwest. <laughs> And I had to show them, like, photos, like, bro, I'm from Sydney, Australia, man. They're like, what the fuck? They couldn't, they couldn't yeah. believe it. And they're like, is that your throw up? Yeah, that's my throw up, man. They're like, wow, dude. But these guys were high as fuck. They had weapons on them and shit, like yeah. high and shit. And it turned out to be like they're getting selfie and shit with, with my throw up. <laughs> and I'm just, at this point, I'm like, I'm sweating, thinking, shit, okay, how am I going to end this conversation? How am I going to get out of this smooth, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm. And um, I gave him some paint. We started bombing. And then I'm like, okay. Oh, they would have loved that. And then I'm like, dude, I, you know, i got to bounce and bomb. And I just started walking back. And my girl was like, what the fuck were you, man? What happened? And I'm like, we don't want to know. Like, seriously, <laughs> I'm just glad to be back. <laughs> Give me, where's my B? Like, oh, yeah. See, grateful, like, yeah, hundred percent. Grateful um, to be alive, man. Because these dudes, like, yeah, they were like full staunch, stepped up, they pushed me and shit. Um, yeah. Another dude was behind him, banner club, that ready to pounce. He had, he, like, he was, you know, he had weapons on him as well. It was three of them. I was just, it was just me. And this is like, I was in the wrong body or wrong hood, wrong time. Mm. But I just said the right thing, and got out of the situation. That's Mexico. Then you got Rio. Let's talk about this, oh, this, this final yeah. little story. Um, you mentioned In the earlier. You were, Rio. Yeah. Rio de Janeiro. Um, yeah, so Rio, one of the best countries that I've been to, especially with the graffiti scene. Um, you don't have to look very far for a, a spot to paint in Rio. Um, especially... In the favelas, because in the favelas it's real, you know, you know, obviously it's like a lot of poverty, a lot of gangs or whatever. But the local people, they don't mind if you paint their wall. You know, they'd rather you paint their their wall than just having it look blank. You know what I'm saying? So like local businesses and stuff like that. Not just houses, anywhere. Yeah, the whole place, the whole favela. That's dope. Like. See, picture that as a favela. It, it kind of looks like a, except a nicer, ver- a nicer yeah. version. <laughs> but you could paint anywhere as long as you just knock on the door, or whatever, meet the locals, show them some photos of your artwork, and just say, "Look, you know, boom, I'm gonna do this here. Is that a cool? Oh, they love it. They'll give you food. They'll give you drinks. That's that's, um, that's dope. So, yeah. So for those uh, three weeks that I was in Rio de Janeiro, I stayed in the favelas the whole three weeks. I did the whole, you go to the El Cristo, the Copacabana Beach, mm. of course, you know, I've got to do those things and it's pretty awesome. But people always say to me, what are you doing in the favelas? It's too dangerous. Like, you're crazy. The thing is, I always say there's three things, if not maybe four or five things that you need if you want to go in. First of all, you have to fit in. You have to, you don't want to stand out in the favelas. So lucky for me, um, a lot of the locals, they thought that I was an that I was a local. They started talking to me in, in Portuguese. Right. And I had to kind of smooth it out with some Portuguese words, a bit of lingo, and just keep moving. You know what I'm saying? Like, here, this is um, this is one of the favelas. I just rocked a piece here in the corner. That's dope, man. That's so That's sick. Mad. And um, so, yeah. There's like, a little bit of Swayze around the world, bro. And that's still there. Because I've got a friend who just lives further up. And he tells me, man, that piece is not going anywhere. That piece is is there for a long time, a long time. And I've done a few pieces in those favelas. Um, there's another one over here, another one, some throw-ups. This throw-up here's got some bullet holes. 
through it. I've, I've seen, I don't know if you can see. So there's a lot of a lot of gangs in this favela, in this one that's the famous El Complexo, Favela Complexo. Um, I wouldn't go to these favelas unless I knew a local graffiti writer. Right. That's how I got in. Because I would make my, um, I knew a Brazilian graffiti writer in Sydney. I met him in Sydney. I hooked him up with some walls. So he's like, okay, he's my favor, you know, back to you. Uh, if you ever go to Brazil, I know graffiti writers in the favelas. He's their contact. Boom. So I kept that. So when I went there, I made, um, there's one of the dudes there, local, local, local artists from in the favelas. And so I hit them up and they meet me down the bottom of the favela. They meet me down in the bottom and they they take me up, you know, like up into the favelas. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't I wouldn't even think of going in. But you gotta know local people, that's one key. You gotta know some local slang, you know what I mean? And you don't wanna stand out. So lucky for me, like if you was Blonde hair, blue eyed, yeah. or Asian, you, you would look stand Brazil. out. You look Brazilian. Not, not trying to be racist, but it is what it is. Mm. Like if you're Asian or blonde hair, blue eyed in the favela, you're gonna stand out. You're gonna stand. You're gonna attract attention. Exactly. The wrong attention. So um, I was conceived actually in Brazil. Oh, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if it was something in the air or in the water, but I turned out more like a Brazilian than a Bolivian because you go to Bolivia and they're all short with straight hair. Yeah. Indigenous Bolivians. And you got the curly and hair. And I got everything. the curls, taller, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so I fit in. So that was just lucky. I fit in. I don't stand out. I know some Portuguese and I know the local people there. Yeah. So with that, there's nothing to worry about. I mean, it's, there's always a risk because, you know, innocent people get shot in the favelas anyway. Yeah. So what happened? I went there. I done this piece. I done that piece. And it, it, it got dark met some locals and they give me just local brew and I was getting pretty, you know, I was getting pretty um, intoxicated or whatever. And it got late. I couldn't get any photos. So I wanted to go back the next morning to get flicks. I ring them up. I say, I'm coming back. i got to get photos. They said, oh, no, you can't come back today. You can't come today. Why not? And I was like, what do you mean? Like, i got to get photos. I can't waste any days. I'm, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm on, I'm on a, a journey here. I'm on like, you mm. know, I'm flying out. Soon. He's like, oh, no, you, you can't come today because um, there's a shooting going on between the cops and the narcos. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, yeah. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. Yeah. Apparently, there was a shooting from 7 a.m. to midday, nonstop, narcos and cops. Three cops died and two narcos died. Oh, shit. This is the next day after I painted that. Wow. So I'm like, Oh man, bro! If only Dude. if only your pieces could talk, the stories they tell. Yeah, hundred percent. Wow. So I was like, okay, look, fair enough. There's a shooting, you know. I'm not gonna go if there's a sh if there's a shootout. So I went the next day. <laughs> I was like, look, I'm coming tomorrow then. And he's like, Just no, no, no. This exact that photo, photo and the other photo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this photo and and the previous one because I've done two pieces. Oh, actually, I did one. When I came back for the other photo, I did another one while I was there. So they're like, you can't come. I said, fair enough. The next morning I rang up and I said, what's the situation today? Is it, has it calmed down? And they said, oh, there's no shooting at the moment. And I said, okay, well, I'm coming. So I went and they're like, but the, we can't guarantee that it's safe because it's pretty tense. Like no one was out in the favelas at this time. But I was like, look, no, I was on a mission. I need, I need to get my photos. So I went back and you could feel the tension, man. You could feel the tension. There was a lot of cops with freaking guns. I'm talking proper guns, AK like this, AKs, man. And they're doing the rifles. They're doing the like patrols, that. and it's crazy because they're they're turning corners like this. Next corner, and there's kids walking around, you know, playing soccer or whatever. Like, could you imagine being a five year old or a ten year old kid hitting your soccer ball, and then you just have a gun? you know, pointed to your head right, yeah. by a cop, a proper bigger gun that's bigger than yeah. your body at the age of five or ten, like. Man, we, we And that's were, just normal, but that was we, just we a were normal thing. Ourselves. That was a normal thing in, in Rio. Bro, we were shooting yeah. ourselves yeah. with Mexico experience as grown men. Imagine a five-year-old man, um, you know what I mean? 
Yeah. Having to live through that. So I got all my work done, met some locals. Um, you yeah. got the shot? Got the yeah. shots, got my flicks. You know, I never, I never leave the country without my photos. No. You need, you need your photos. Otherwise, it's like you haven't done it. You know, that's right. Need. If it's, if it's not recorded, it's like, it, yeah, it never happened. It kind of sucks that it's that's the, that's the life that we live now. Like yeah. when I first started Graf, ninety nine. Like if I didn't get the photo, I didn't really care. It was word of mouth. Oh but yeah. Now yeah. that's dope. It's. I love photos. I love photography. So I always got to get my snaps. I want to ask you a question. What makes illegal graffiti an art? I know the answer. What makes it an art? Yeah, but I want I want you to express it. Well, I'm not sure exactly what you mean, but um because, because, because some people think of it as yeah, vandalism. Exactly. Yeah, some people yeah. see it as vandalism. Now you got people right. in Canberra doing it. We already know what we think of For the me, illegal yeah. graphic in Canberra, mm, mm, the bombing and stuff. You know, I guess I mean, what makes yeah. it an art? I believe that is an art in its own. It definitely, mm. is an art form because For me, there's yeah. there's style involved. Exactly. The it, there's the placement is it, it you know what I mean? But I want I want you to see what it is for me. Um, just to flip it on the other side, what makes it illegal is the surface. Like you might show the public a piece that you've done. And they'll look at it, oh, but it's done on a train, so it's illegal. It's not art anymore because it's done illegally. So they disqualify the piece as anything artistic because of the surface that you put it on, which is wrong. <laughs> like that's totally mm. just doesn't make sense to me. It's like if you do the exact same painting, the exact same art piece that you've done on the train on a canvas, then the public's going to say, oh, that's art. But if it's on a train, it's not art. Like that's mm. it's got nothing to do with art. The the surface has nothing to do with art. It's yeah. it's it's the subject matter. It's what you're creating. You know what I mean? Like you can have something that's art on an illegal surface. It's still art. It's just done on an illegal on an illegal surface. It doesn't doesn't mean that it's not art anymore. Right. It has nothing to do with that, if you know what I'm saying. Like, And for some people, so that surface is the only surface available to them. Exactly, too. Like, um, yeah, or that's just what they choose. They enjoy, you know, they want their, their art piece to be seen by hundreds of people around the city. So that's, you know, that's the whole aim. Um, no one's going to see it if you paint the canvas in your room and you put it up on your wall. No one's going to see that. But what makes it art is the subject matter, you know, not not the surface. So, yeah, I'll, a lot of, you know. I'll tell I'll tell you what it is for me, because mm. I I've talked about this topic for a while and I've been asked about it too. But for me, bombing, it's an art because it's you're not just scribbling on some surface, you're putting your name and it has to be visible. It has mm. to have style. And under pressure. That's a big one. That's right. That's you got timing. Time. But also the placement. Under pressure. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sometimes you see some pieces in it, you know, and you want to fuck. Rooftops. You see, fuck, how the mm. fuck did he get up there? You know what I mean? That mm. guy could have died doing that. And you can't even, like, see half the time. You can't see what half the painting. time. But the fact that he got up there at nighttime, who knows how the fuck can't he got say up shit. there. And it's easily be easily readable mm. letters are clean and the colors are dope and all you had was just a bit of moonlight or street lights if you're lucky if that yeah you know what i mean so and you never know what you've painted till the next morning you look at it you think oh shit okay that's what I, you know that's what i painted. yeah sometimes it's... it could be like oh fuck, I, I missed i missed a few lines you know like you couldn't see you miss some you miss some gaps yeah. or whatever but so these part of the these process. are uh you know, add points to you being a graffiti writer. You know what I mean? Mm. How easily visible the, the, the thing style I can love about it read. is it's a, it can also be like a sum of its parts, like a, a, a mark on the city as a whole when yeah. combining all these individual bits of work as a whole, it's also a piece mm. of art yeah. and a mark on the city. 
Yeah, exactly. Hundred percent. That's what it is. It's a mark. You're not scribbling for the for the sake of scribbling. No, you're there putting your name with style. You know what I mean? It, it all comes to style in the end. It's it all, all comes style, down to style. Man. You know what I mean? It shouldn't matter what surface and, you're painting on. You're and, painting. You're creating something artistic. And this is so, how it. We go back to Bruce. You know what I mean? You have to adapt to any surface. Exactly. Like one, water. Like one water. surface could be brick. The other one could be a train. The next mm. one could be a window. You know what I'm saying? That's it, man. I love. I love that. That the one of the famous quotes that he said was, "Absorb what is useful, reject what is useless." And add mm-hmm. what is essentially your own. Your own flavor. You know what I mean? That's dope. Well, your own, I think yeah. that's a perfect place to end it, guys. Back Let's in, end it. Back with Bruce. With the Bruce quote. Absolute pleasure having you guys in. Thank you so much for popping into the flats. And uh, we're keen Pleasure's to see what the, uh, what the next project is. Bruce and Brandon. In, uh, in, in Dixon. Dixon. Yeah. Mm. 2021. Sorry, no. 2022. Yeah. 2022, yeah. local. This is happening. Keep an eye out, guys. Stay and, tuned. Uh, Thank you, stay Nick. Stay tuned. Cheers, yeah. brother. Thank you, guys.